Welcome back to the BJJ Fanatics podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Ford. My guest today is a cult icon in the jiu-jitsu community. He's a fourth-degree black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, a no-gi world champion, a multiple-time Pan Ams champion. He's currently teaching out of La Marinda Jiu-Jitsu in Lafayette, California, just outside of San Francisco, as well as the Half Gracie Academy in downtown San Francisco. You may have seen him on TV as he was featured on Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown. His move of the week on YouTube has been very popular for over a decade now. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me for our 30th interview interview together is my good buddy Kurt Osiander. How are you today, Kurt? Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Kurt, I appreciate you waking up early for this, man. I, uh, I I do appreciate it. It's always good to have you on the show. And dude, it's been over 30 plus hours of shenanigans with us on the show over the years. So I appreciate yeah. you uh, for all your time put in. And, uh, I'm looking forward to another one with you today, buddy. How's everything going? Cool. I'm, I'm just down here at the Academy pre everything. So it's empty. And um, I'm just sitting here with Lulu and drinking coffee and talking to you, man. Nice, awesome. Well, I appreciate it, dude. Are you still doing uh, tattoo work? Are you still Are you still drawing and and, and working over at Seven uh, Sons I, at all? I, I, after I I got sick and everything, I, it's been like a two year hiatus from like drawing and doing my music stuff. And um, I'm I'm just now rolling now, so. Uh, everything's starting to go back to normal. So I should hopefully be back to doing that stuff also. Nice. You know, it's just like I was I was laid out pretty good for for a year with both the hips getting done. And then last year was just like building up to be able to teach well again, you know. And so I, I was moving around pretty good doing, a, you know, showing techniques and stuff like that. And the stuff that I can't do anymore, you know, I – I just have to explain it and then have, you know, one of the other guys do it. But it's a, I only can do, I can, I can do pretty much everything. But then I started rolling again in a, in December and then I rolled all this month. And so it's, it's slowly building up, you know, it, like they say, it's like usually twice the amount that you're laid off to come back. So I'm not, in, I'm not in any big hurry. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm glad that things are that things are back to normal. Last time we talked on the show, you were saying that you were back to back to rolling again with select students, and I'm happy to hear yeah. that's still still the case. I actually just got a new tattoo, man. I, so I've been I've been, I was out for a couple of weeks just to let it heal. How how long do you typically take time off between tattoos? Myself? Yeah, probably nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> like 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 two three days. Oh, okay, so you at least do something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then I. I like neosporin the shit out of it and put on a rash guard and depending where it is, like, you know, if it's on my arm, then, <clears throat> then primarily I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll not pass, you know, because you use your arms a lot. And then if it's on my legs, I, I don't do guard, you know? So if I, if it's an upper body tattoo, you know, and it's on the front, you know, or whatever, then I usually do a lot of guard work and don't use my arm, stuff like that. Nice. Gives you lots of motivation to for, to, for your retention, to keep your guard retention in, intact. Right? right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. The, uh, the, I know that like the first three days are when it's most prone to infections. So I know a lot of people will take the three days and then once it's scabbing up, I don't know. I'm just, I'm paranoid. Whenever I get one, I, uh, I, I take more time off than, than recommended even just cause I'm paranoid of screwing it up. You know what I mean? So like, like right when I get tattooed, I usually, the, the guy, you know, whoever it is, Luke or George or, you know, whoever, Joey or whoever tattoos me, uh, they go, go home and, and take a, a really hot shower, you know, a really, really hot shower on the on the tattooed area. Right. And then, you know, just put a nice light coat of uh, Neosporin on it. And then I'm um, I just leave it open as much as possible because that's what heals everything, you know, just like cuts or or, you know, when you get a rug burn or whatever, you know, the more you leave it open, the, the faster it heals. Yeah, that, that, that's a weird thing about ta about tattoo recovery is like you hear a lot of different people, even artists have different opinions. Like I've been told explicitly to not put hot water on it, whereas you've been told really? you've been told to put hot water. I've also been told, I've been told. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've also been told like to not wrap it in plastic, and then I've also been told by other artists, dude, definitely wrap it in plastic for the first few days. Well, that's just on the way home, you know. And then, the, and then when I, I get home, I take the extremely hot shower and everything like that, right on the on the tattoo and everything. And that uh, all my all my friends, they they say it, it helps the 
you know, helps the healing process and then he- helps it all, you know, calm down and everything. And also uh, to k- stick the ink in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, the, the wrapping thing always kind of freaks me out because like I, I recently had, a, it wasn't like a major staph infection, but I had a little bit of a staffy thing on my knee because I scraped my knee skateboarding and then put a Band-Aid on it and the sweat from the Band-Aid from underneath the sticky part caused a little a little staffy bump kind of thing. It's always good to be worried about staff. <laughs> yeah, but imagine you know? like staff on a tattoo, like that would be awful. Yeah, that, well, I've seen it. Yeah, it probably destroys the yeah. whole thing, huh? Well, no, I, I mean, it, it's affected and everything, and, uh, and like where, where it does get infected and everything, sometimes it'll, it, you'll have to reshoot the color after it heals, you know? Which is yeah, twice the work now. Yeah, for sure. Plus the yeah. plus you pay more. It's not that's not free. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nothing's free. Yeah, Kurt, do you have any real estate left on your body for more tattoos? Or are you pretty much covered? Everyone? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm. Uh, I got some spots. Yeah. What do you, what do you want got, to add? I want to do something on the back of my thighs, the front of my shins, my my calves, and the tops of my feet. The tops. Of I your want a neck. Yeah, I want a neck tattoo. You want to get a neck tattoo? Okay, cool. Would you? Do you know what you want to I get? Wanna, yeah, I know what I want to do. I it? do. What is it? Like, I want to get my eagle. You know the eagle? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. My eagle emblem. I want to get that like right here on on the front of my throat. On your throat. That'll but be that, cool. That's pretty fucking hard, man. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you leave all society behind. <laughs> you've already, you've pretty much already done that a long time ago, though, well, dude. I think, but, you're in good I, but I can fool the people. <laughs> I, I can, I can put my hair up and I can fool the people, and they, and they go, "Oh no, he's normal." I would bet my house and even my family that Kurt Osiander will never ever put on a suit and work a corporate job in his life. I, don't, I, I will don't, never. I don't think. Yeah, I just, I don't think that you need to worry about any of that. I'll put on a badass suit, but I will never work in an office. Yeah, yeah, that just wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. I think uh, I think you'd be of all people that I know. I think you'd be safest to get a throat tattoo and be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got all my friends are do all my friends did it, <laughs> and like so other people are like if if your friends did it, if they jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge? And I'm like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's you know? like depends depends how deep the wa- <laughs> depends how deep the water <laughs> is. Yeah. I mean, how high is the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, fuck yeah, I'll jump off of it. I used to jump off of everything. Uh, that's awesome. What do, what do you think is the most painful spot you've gotten inked at? Cause I've heard like the, I got this one I got on my forearm. It's, it's, it goes all the way down to my wrist and people used to say the wrist is real bad, but I didn't think it was bad at all. What, what was the most uh, painful spot? I, I, I think the wrist is really bad. You think so? The really? wrist, yeah. The wrist or the ditch. You know, right, right on the uh, in the inside of your arm. Yeah, the bicep. That's uh, pr- the, the right there. The inside, the crux of your elbow is really fucking bad tattoo. The wrist. I thought the wrist was really bad. Everybody's like, "Why are you being such a pussy?" I'm all fuck that. That's where I'm torturing people. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna fuck a wrist tattoo you. You know. Otherwise, everything else was pretty good. Like the whole back was just like getting whipped for a really long time, and um. But, you know, otherwise, you know, I think the wrist or the ditch is really bad. Yeah, I can see that. I've also, but I've also heard the neck and the throat is real bad, too, especially the throat. So if you, if you decide. No, to- no. Oh, my God. She's doing zoomies. What's, it, what's, what's that, your dog? Yeah, Lulu's, man. Oh, she's, she spr- she's sprinting around. She's- she jumps really fucking high. Well, she's a the cats bull, are man. really hard pressed in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> the cats think, oh, if I just jump up on this fence, I'll be out of the way. And Lulu fucking chases them up the fence and like tries to get them before they get out over the fence. Dude, have you seen those training videos of like Bel? Uh, what are those dogs called? Belgian, Belgian. Belgian Mar- Malois. Malois, thank you. Have you seen like that's their- what the cops use? Oh my god! Like they run up walls and shit. Like they'll run up a two-story wall and like grab a uh, a rope at the top and hang from it. Yeah, and, and they do no, the same this, thing with pit bulls. There, there's this one fucking thing. It's like an obstacle course for for dogs, right? And it's like really agility, and then they have to climb ladders. The thing is, is I had a dog that climbed ladder ladders when I was roofing, and we used to strap a, a, a a backpack on her full of staples. So when we ran out of staples up on the roof, we'd call the dog and the dog would bring more staples so you wouldn't have to stop, right? The only thing is dogs can't climb down ladders, but they can jump off of roofs. 
Oh, wow. But that's a pretty so, hard, hard landing, though. That's what they break their well, legs. Well, no, it's only, you know, eight feet high. You oh, know, okay. most, most lower levels of most people's houses are like, you know, eight to ten feet high. That's nothing for a dog. Yeah, I could see that, I guess. But yeah, that's uh, man. Some of those training videos, like I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll be honest. Two of my, two of my biggest guilty pleasures are are watching people get tased in like cop videos, and watching an attack dog like that go after somebody. Those are two of my oh, things where I'm just like, whenever it's hey, like a standoff between cops. That is my favorite thing. <laughs> Come out of there right now, or we're sending the dog. <laughs> right. You know, and I'm like, send the dog. I'm always the same, like, please do it. Don't, don't come out. Stay in the attic. Yeah. Send the dog. I'm se- Look, if I'm a cop, you're fucked. <laughs> Dude, I- uh, a, I'm gonna send the dog and taser you. <laughs> just, just because, and the dog will be like dragging the limp guy around. And he's like, and he's he's shocked, and the dog is pulling his arm and leg off. Yeah, dude, I swear, like, some of the best episodes of Cops are the ones where, like, a meth head won't come out of the crawl space, and they send in the dog, and you just hear, ah! And he's getting dragged out by his leg. I, I, I can't help it, man. I laugh every time. I, I can't. No, I, know, they're, I, know they're, it's, I know it's mean, but... Uh, the Toothless and Ruthless. Toothless and Ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the most entertaining part of those cop shows and everything. <laughs> Uh, dude, what is the area like ar- around the academy you're in right now, around La Mirinda? Is, oh, it's it's fucking posh. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's not like it's not like it's, Ralph's house. N- no, no, it's not down in the in the like where the fucking homeless creep around and stuff like that. Like here, there's uh, you don't see homeless. They they get a ride to the border and then a swift kick in the ass and say, "Don't come back." You know. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I remember when I was up there with you, um, it was pretty crazy at that time, but I can imagine now with like the fentanyl crisis and all that stuff, I imagine oh, it's gotten only, dude. only worse. And, and, and I see one of my students, uh, he's a he's a San Francisco cop. And I, I, I've been just like watching the news and just all this crazy shit, you know, about San Francisco and this and that. And I'm like, dude, what's going on? He's all, it's crazy crazy out here he's all he's all it's like fucking marlboro country wow. Wow. <laughs> you know yeah, i was watching a thing where like people aren't people aren't leaving their windows up they, they roll their windows down and leave the car empty to prevent their windows from getting smashed just so they can yeah. see there's nothing in there to take are people, are people- that's the that's the biggest thing is the 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 car break-ins and you know they always tell people at the airport take everything out of your rental car you know, before you, you know, like go straight to your hotel room and empty out the car and people are like, oh, let's stop and look at this. And then we'll break your window and steal all your luggage and your passport and everything else. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. I've also seen yeah. like the like the, the, the way there was a thing I was watching the other day where they had a security thing over the glass at like a CVS or something, and some dude literally breaks out a blowtorch and he starts torching, melting off the, the the zip tie thing or whatever it was that they had on there, and then he got into it. And everyone. So that's that's like at all Walgreens. That's even out here where I live. Wow. So I go to Walgreens and I'm like, I think I'll buy a razor and and you know whatever, and I go back there and. And everything is behind plexiglass. You have to have someone come and help you get it open. But but the places in in the city, you walk in the store and there's nothing on the shelves. Yeah. You, 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 could, you could you have to go online and then they'll have the stuff at the counter. They're so fucking scared. Oh my god. So dude, and the and the like the organized like looting where they like run in in a big bunch of people and then they start just like ransacking like either the jewelry section or the the high end purse section yeah you know or or perfume wow so yeah no that's the biggest deal around here that's what's been happening wow. it's a lot of big invasions and and of course the drive through uh robberies what do you where they t- they they steal a car they drive said car through the security gate oh my God. and then and then loot oh my and then God. escape. Jeez, yeah, that's wild, dude. That is so crazy. I, I was watching a video not long ago where like, I guess, citizens, like just everyday people were so fed up with it that they started trying to fight 
with people that were stealing. And it's like, I understand the sentiment. Like I get how you feel and I get it, but man, I'm not going to get stabbed over someone stealing a, something from a store. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just, that's just, stabbed would be all right. These yeah. motherfuckers are carrying heat. Yeah. Man. They're yeah. fucking not fucking around. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't think it'd be worth it, but I, uh, but I do understand the fury that you're sitting there being a good citizen. You're in line, you're ready to pay for something with money that you worked for to have people just doing all this. I mean, I, I get the it's, anger, but it's so bad in Oakland that they uh, recalled uh, the chief of police for Oakland. So he got fired. Wow. Right. And then the, the mayor of Oakland is like, has, has this, uh, how can I say? She's like the attorney of the County of Oakland and in that area, she's kind of lenient on crimes and stuff like that. And, and then, and then they're like, dude, these guys are doing armed invasions of properties and then they get caught. And then you want to like, oh, okay, you guys did a bad thing. Don't do it again and let them go because they go right back to it, you know? So they're recalling her also. They're like, no, you're not going to be mayor anymore too. So, there, so it's it's a it's pretty bad around here. Well, in like the bigger cities like Oakland, San Francisco, even Berkeley. Berkeley though, they can't fight back because they're a bunch of fucking hippies. So, <laughs> have so, you? Have you? <laughs> so, the, so the, the conquest of Berkeley will be really easy. Have you noticed an uptick in people signing up for self defense and for jujitsu during during these times? Um. No, not really. You know, I mean, you figure they would or, or do something, but I, nothing, nothing yet. Nothing like uh, visible. Like I can tell, I mean, there's always, you know, new students and stuff like that and they come and they, they either stay or they don't, you know, it depends on, on what they want out of the Jiu Jitsu Academy. You know, sometimes it's too hard it's too very, it's a very difficult sport. For sure. For, for people, for new students that come in and want to get um, like a good strong base of self-defense abilities, like what, what, are the, what are the most important things that you show them within the, say, their first year of training so they have that? like Like basics, you know, all basics. It's like you got to have a good OOPA. You got to know some self-defense. Like my guys like here, they're like, we know you do a lot of self-defense. I go, I use a lot of self-defense when I'm training. And they're like, what do you mean I'm all – you can do all these things standing. You can do them on the ground, you know? So, but, but if you get good basics, you know, and then also be really aware of your surroundings and stuff like that, like don't walk into the alley with a flickering light or, at all. or, or at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, why did you even park there? Yeah, uh, but, but, you know, <clears throat> there have been instances where, where people are, are like, you know, they get invaded and they're fucking armed and they'll shoot at you, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, fuck yeah, that's what people should do. If you come in my place, I'm going to fucking shoot you. I'm going to shoot you with some weird shit though. Yeah. 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 Your house is like a, it's like an amusement park of weaponry. They're going to get hit with like, they're going to get hit with like 13th century crossbows and like yes. a, Apache, uh, like authentic Apache arrows and everything else. Yes. You have. <laughs> a battle and, and throwing axes, all kinds of weird shit. There's going to be shit flying at you. Like at, at all levels and like a bunch of them. Dude, you should set up like, that would be a, a, an interesting like museum experience for home invaders. Like you could have, you know, when you go through a museum, there's like the automated voices that tell you the paintings you're looking at. Like as they break in, you're like, oh, you've noticed now that you've received a Comanche arrow to your knee. Notice how the fletching, the, the Comanche, it gives them like a whole like historical background on the weapons. As they're you can tell, with. it's not going to be able to be pulled out the same way. <laughs> You'll have to cut off the head and shove it through. As you step towards my living room, you now notice that it's an ancient German <laughs> flying axe heading towards your face. You'll notice the engraving yeah. on the side. Yeah, it has like a whole like. <laughs> it's lovely and you can feel the weight, feel the weight. <laughs> you know, fuck, you gotta see my automatic crossbow. I do have to see your automatic crossbow. I but, don't think you understand. It's from Germany, of course. Yeah, of course. But, <laughs> naturally, but of course. <laughs> and so, so my friend bought it for me because those fuckers who broke into my house and stole all my shit. But my friend fucking bought me this fucking crossbow, Andy, and um, it's automatic. So you you cock it, 
and it's cocked and you can put in a standard, you know, bolt in it for like killing deer and whatever people. And then if you want to go automatic, you take like eight fucking bolts that are like mini, like mini ones. Right. And you put them into the magazine and then you go boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And you got eight shots. So you could try running. (laughs) <laughs> keyword, right? keyword is try but I, I, i'll be trotting along behind you shooting <laughs> all i know is like finally people are like like that's what they noticed is is a lot of people were buying guns and and you know how california is it's like oh we've people are buying more guns that's that's not good yeah. because they're 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 scared because there's home invasions there's sure. workplace invasions there's all kinds of crazy shit going on but of course the, the guns always end up in in the wrong hands and and then you have the the you know you have the bad guys with really good guns and the good guys with with very good guns here <laughs> but it's not it's not like brazil you know like over there they have to buy their own weaponry and they usually don't have a really nice you know glock and a fucking ar and a fucking a, a street sweeper fucking shotgun and shit like that yeah it, 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 from what i've seen it's it's practically it's almost impossible for citizens to have guns in brazil like you have to uh you, you can have them for for shooting at a gun range like they have ranges here but when it comes to like carrying it on yourself or in your car or even in your house like if you if the, the, there's cases where people defend their home from an invasion and they still get in trouble for using a gun in their home because they didn't it was just supposed to be for sport shooting and they weren't supposed to it's it's weird it, it's it was a sport yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it was just like live, sporting live airsoft with with my, <laughs> it's 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 involuntary airsoft i guess is what that what that would fall into Shit. but uh but dude when it comes to when it comes to uh like you mentioned when you have new students coming in mostly you just lean heavily into the fundamentals whether it's sport or self-defense as the focus do you feel that the fundamentals of jiu-jitsu have changed with the evolution of the sport like like with with things getting more and more advanced all the time and people learning jiu-jitsu faster than ever does have the fundamentals changed like are there things that you to be more advanced that you teach to new people now of course there, everything is evolving and everything and so the curriculum may add add you know more stuff to it you know but but basically like just like 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 ancient warfare and everything, it, the basics are the basics, and that's what's always going to get you through, you know. Um, like this week, like after tournaments, I always do this lesson, and, and everybody goes, "Oh fuck, here comes that fucking lesson." Is 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 elbow escape and getting your guard back to front, or or escaping mount, you know, like because you get mounted. I mean, it's bad, but you don't know really bad until you have half on top of you mounted and it's fucking got punching. Yeah, right. You know, and then you're like, fuck, I got to get the fuck out of here. Fuck. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I said, I'm, I'm explaining. I'm all, hey, look, just imagine if a guy was punching you and they go, what are you doing? I'm all finish your elbow escape, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, and they're like, what's the elbow escape? I'm all the escape how you move your hips and stuff. And they're like, oh, we call it shrimping them all. If I want shrimp, I'll scream shrimp. And I expect a shrimp cocktail, you know? <laughs> it's like, what you tell, you tell the little kids shrimp. For you guys over 16, it's elbow escape because yeah, right. it's not hand escape. If you put your hand on the guy's knee, he goes kimura. So it's elbow escape and you, and you scoot your hips and everything. So, you know, and, and they're like, but, but seriously, Kurt, what if the what if it is a serious situation where the guy mounts you? I'm all you're gonna take a couple, two, three punches before you get out. Yeah. And they're like, and you have to just you gotta just be at had one with that. <laughs> well, no, I, I think that I think what you just said is really important, man. Because for a long time in martial arts, I think there was this there was this um, this attitude or this illusion that if you train martial arts, like nothing can affect you, like like you'll be able to dodge every punch and block everything. And there's an answer for everything that could come your way. I think that jujitsu's approach has been better in that you're honest with the student. Like, look, you might take a little damage. It's all about minimizing the damage and and getting to a a, a good position where where you're more safe. Yeah, or or getting the fuck out of there. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? I also think that boxing, like sports like boxing and Muay Thai do the same thing. Like they, they explain like, yeah, man, you're going to get hit. Here's how you mitigate that. Here's how you make it a little less exactly. terrible, you know, and here's how you move your head to avoid it the best you can. But yeah, yeah, if you're going to be in a fight, you're going to get, you're going to get it, at the very least scraped up on your knees or something. You know? Yeah. Something's going to happen and you're going to have to fucking ignore that. Exactly. If, if, if jujitsu didn't exist, what do you think you'd train? What martial art would you have stuck with, do you think? Uh, I was just doing the lead singer, like, brawling style. <laughs> Stage diving with elbows, yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it, it was like grab the guy and then throw him on the floor. Luckily, you know, I, my dad was a Greco and a freestyle wrestler, so I grew up with that, you know, wrestling with him as a kid. And so it's, it was always... Uh, if the if the guy is hitting you good, you you pick him up, you throw him in the sky, and I'm all, all right, you know, because the guy usually lands and goes, "What the fuck was that?" You know, <laughs> so yeah, I would have stayed with like some sort of grappling, anything grappling. Yeah, that's a good call. You, you know, you were talking earlier about the importance of like the elbow escape, and I, I truly think one of the best skills you can have in jujitsu is being able to recompose your guard at will. Because I mean, you 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 make someone go through the motions of passing your guard, which is which takes a lot of effort sometimes. Uh, most of the time, it takes a lot of effort, and then you settle in, and then the guy's just out again. You have to do it all over again, and a few a few cycles. That's of that. that's 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 what I say to my guys. I'm all. Fuck, the hardest thing in jiu-jitsu is to pass fucking guard. Yeah. And that's when you're going to go, you have to stay, like, persistent and and pass that guard and stabilize, you know. Even if the guy, you know, gets it back, what's your job? Fuck, pass that motherfucking guard again. There is no other option. I'm going to hang out. And, and, that, and that's what kind of, like, I notice at tournaments now is the guy will make points and he'll come on top and then he kind of, like, stops <laughs> and i'm all this guy i'm all ref he's fucking stalling he's all he's on top i'm all he's on top with no intention of passing the guard yeah. he just he came on top and then freezes like a goddamn statue what do you say think are some of the best tips to pass guard effectively like to to, to not waste so much energy and to to be more efficient with it um since everything's like leg locks and everything, you know, and like going under, but there has to be a space for the guy to go under into. So I, I like to like last week I was doing like uh, how to pass butterfly guard with the over under, you know, and then if they got a guard to to double under and scoop them up and just avoid their guard and go behind them. And then either, you know, always like stepping in and then going down really, really quickly so that there is no <clears throat> threat to your legs. Whereas if you're standing up or you got to, you know, trying to slice through and stuff, the guy will go upside down and he'll go after your leg, you know. So I always, I always get my toes planted and my knees on the floor and my knees wide so it keeps my butt down, you know. And so that's, that's the big part emphasis. Also, it's like, I think I got better at teaching <laughs> and explaining things. And it's like, if your knees are in line with your hips, your butt is up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so my knees do not come up. And if they do come up, my knees are really wide. So my butt doesn't come up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like a frog. And so then I, I, I they're like, how come you pass? How do you, how do you, why do you pass well still? And I'm all, well, it's been two years. I, I, I'll get better again. But the, the key is, is when I pass is I don't pass like this so that, the, that there's going to be a cave in. I pass like I make myself like a shape of a shield. Mm. So everything here is the distance here underneath here is very, very sparse because my hips are down and everything he's trying to put in is going to deflect off the shield. Oh, nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like the, I'm, a, I'm like the front of a, of a bulldozer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so they're, they're like, they're like, that works. I'm all, fuck yeah, it works. What do you think? The guy has no, no place to put his feet because there's no purchase. And so then he fucking just skips off and then, and it, it, it makes him go the other way. You know, think about it. If a shield was faced inwards, it fucking would gather arrows, you know? So. <laughs>
it's usually your your go-to protocol like if someone passes your guard you're right you're you're or if you're passing guard rather that's your go-to protocol yeah i mean at i'm always gonna have my hips down and i'm gonna i'm i'm barely have my knees on the floor that you just the cloth on 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 the gi is just touching the floor because I'm, I'm putting all my weight on the guy. I'm not going to share it with the floor. Yeah. You know, that's excellent. And then dipping your hips and keeping your chest forward makes the guy rebound off of you rather than settle in. Yeah. That's excellent, man. I really like that. Yeah. I, I sometimes find myself like if I'm rolling with someone with a really technical good guard, I have about three different variations of guard passes that I cycle through. And every now and again, I'll, I'll be with someone where I'm just like, dude, none of this is working. So I'll start maybe threatening leg locks to get them to open things up a little bit differently. But it's, it, it can be, it can be, it, it can be frustrating, man. If you have someone with a good guard, like, damn, is it, yeah. it can be tough. You gotta, you gotta pin their leg, you know, yes. you gotta pin their leg really good and staple it down and then get a hold of their hips. So my, so my big thing is, is like, and, and I heard Hickson say it years and years ago. And he said, uh, if you stop the guy's hips, you stop all his jujitsu. Yeah, I could see that. Right. So if he can't move his hips, so my, like what I'm experimenting right now lately is um, I'm passing and I, instead of, you know, like going with the underhook and getting head control like that, whereas a squiggly guy will like squiggle out, is instead I'll, I'll, I'll pass and then I'll reach around and I'll grab his whole hip and rotate him up so that my hand goes underneath like his low back and then I have his hips. And then his hips, he cannot pass his leg, he's laying flat, he doesn't have the angle, even if he's really flexible, the only thing he can do, if BJ, <laughs> BJ would do this, I would get there and hold him, and he would take his foot and put it in front of my face, and I would look around and I'd go, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Whose foot is that, you know? But, but if you got his hips and you got him really with your hip against his hip and then my arm around his hip, and then I'll get you know, his arm control or his head control rather than going the under, under hook because some guys are pretty tricky. They draw you into that under hook and then they fucking hit the giggler. Yeah. The giggler sweep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. That fucking giggler fucking Luke would fucking, he doesn't just tilt you. He kind of lifts you up. And if you're shorter, you come off the floor yeah. and then you tilt, then you tilt for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a really, a really effective low effort sweep, man. That's that's definitely a, a good one to use if you're the guy on the bottom. Uh, do you find it easier to pass guard in, in the gi because of the grips that you have available and the lapels and things like that? Of course, you can tie in more, but the thing is, like, the la last thing when I taught all all these passes, and then I go, now look, I'm gonna pass this guy's guard, and I'm gonna use all three of the passes I showed you in different variations, but it's, it's always going to come back to this. So you have to be malleable, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you have to be able to adjust to, to his guard and what he's doing. And, and you're, you have to change too, but one rule is always the same. I have to pin a leg. I, if I don't pin a leg, I have to go two in or two out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's a few rules and stuff like that. Yeah, I could see that. But like, but like, I, I always grab people the same way when I'm passing gi and no gi. So I, I usually grab flesh. <laughs> You're one of those guys, dude. You grab the, you grab the fat of the underarm or like the meat of the leg. I will, I will hook into like, <laughs> like places where you have landmarks. You know what I'm saying? Like you can hook in here, you can hook in there, and 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 clamp on like this, you know, and then, and then it, it blocks, blocks their movement and stuff. So I, I think that that's why my game like goes from gi to gila so easily because I, I don't need it. I don't need the gi. I'm just going to pass the same way and I'm just going to grab you really fucking hard. That makes and sense. get arthritis. Yeah. Yeah. Flare up there, but then you'll predict weather better. Like we talked about last time. So, uh, well, yeah, I can tell you right now, it's going to rain in about an hour. <laughs> Oh, my, man. my my right knee is aching right now and i <laughs> i feel that it's gonna rain what do you think is the per the, the the humidity the, the the level of humidity what percentage would you predict right now right now i say it's up in the 80s <laughs> 
<laughs> look, look, I'm looking outside at the same time. Yeah, it, it, You're cheating. It's You're fucking, cheating. You're looking it's, out the it's, hu- it's humid because I woke up and I walked outside and it was 70 degrees and it's winter time. Oh my God. That's crazy. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think is the most annoying variation of guard to pass? What, what, which one, which one do you think is the most difficult to, to deconstruct? Uh, when they do knee point or, or K guard. Yeah. K guard. Yeah, sure. Right. I don't know where these names all come from. And they're all, don't you know about this? And I'm like, no, (laughs) (laughs) no, I don't know anything about it. I come in and they're like, oh yeah, I know that. I'm like, fuck you. You don't know fucking shit. (laughs) You know? Oh no, I already know that. (laughs) Please have that. You know? Yeah. Like I find knee point and like that K guard and everything. It's like, if you, pound into it that's all you're gonna do is you're gonna pound yourself into it and he's gonna stay there and you're gonna stay there if i get up he's gonna go under right so i don't get up but what i do is i back out and then i re-engage and so in the back out he either has to come with me or I detach from him and then I restart the whole process again, which I find is way, way better. Because if I stay stubborn and have my OCD attack and I just pound myself into his shin repeatedly, and I'm like, this is really stupid. Keep doing it. <laughs> you know? So I had to, because I was getting stuck there too. And I was like, fuck that. I'm just going to smash through it. And, and I would. But at what cost? I'm fucking totally scraped up. I had to exert myself hard and, and I was pissed. Yeah. Right. You know, which, which is not good. You, you can't get pissed because that, then it, it's, uh, it obscures your, your, your open mindedness, right? Because then you're pissed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I usually back out and, and then I, I reassess and I start doing some stuff to the, to, to the, to the legs and stuff and then you know but i don't get up because that's what they want yeah, for sure no i appreciate the insight man because i know yeah you have a, you have a really effective and solid passing game for anyone that's ever watched you compete so i, I appreciate you breaking that down because it, it is it is for a lot of people i think one of the most frustrating aspects of jiu-jitsu is learning how to pass a difficult guard for sure yeah but you but, but that's your that's your objective you that's your job. Yeah. But then, then again, I got, I got brought up by Half, and he's all, okay, we're going to, we're, you're going to be a passer. And I'll, but what about my guard Half? And he's all, you, you go to your knees, you take them down or, or you sit back to your guard. And, and a lot of people underestimate that, you know, some people, they don't have the finesse and the flexibility to do, uh, uh you know, pummeling with their legs, you know, schema, schema, schema aspanas and then and put the feet on the hips and make hooks and stuff like that but if you start coming around i can either you know keep the sleeve and try to dump you or push your head or i turn to my knees and i try to take you down which i show all my wrestlers and they're all this is a guard and I'm all, it's kind of a guard <laughs> right the guy didn't pass it did he he goes no i went to my knees and i double legged them all it's it's go. a really good guard yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely like turtle guard, for example. Something, something, something that, uh, that that people might not realize is it, when they're new to jujitsu is that yeah, when you're on when you're on all fours and you're in a turtle, that that's a variation of guard. I mean, you're not past that. Yeah. Point. Well, There's tell just, us, tell us, pr- prove that. Yeah. And 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 I use it, but I, I'm like I always try to roll underneath the guy if he's high, and then I try to dump him or I'll realign, you know. Yeah. So. That's awesome. But otherwise, in a street fight, they're going to kick you in your head. Yeah, best, best to get up at that point. If you get the turtle in a street fight, best to, best to try to stand and make some, make some space. <laughs> Don't stay there and go, come on, try and pass my turtle guard. <laughs> and the guy's going to go, no, bah. <laughs> oh man well i appreciate the breakdown kurt buddy i tell you what we've reached about the halfway point of the show we usually play the pummel game here but we just played it like a month ago and you've done the pummel i don't know 20 plus times at this point so we're gonna play instead would you rather 
the Would You Rather All game. Right. Put together some Would You Rather right. questions for you. So here we go. Question one for the Would You Rather game. Would you rather ta travel back in time to the Roman gladiator days or back to the Wild West? We talked in the last episode about the Wild West. What would you choose? Oh, I'm going back to gladiator days. But, gladiator days. you know, th this is – there's no – um guarantee that you're going to go back and be like oh cool i'm going to be a centurion or i'm going to be in the roman legion or i'll be a, a gladiator you know you could be the 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 fucking the vomitarium's fucking clean out boy <laughs> right. you know the horse stall guy yeah <laughs> exactly you, you could you could have the fucking worst job ever you got to clean up after the orgy and shit like that <laughs> Dude, that would be tough. You know, that's top everybody of the partied and they puked all over each other and fucked, and then you got to go in there and clean up. That's for sure worse. I would, I'd be a stable I would boy like to, all day I would, long. I would go to, I would go back to both those times because I, I would, I would go and just run around and just shoot people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I would, I would take cleaning out a horse stall over the orgy cleanup guy any day of the week. Yeah, man. fucking yeah. a. Yeah. I'd rather do the stalls than the fucking. The makeout room. You think your job? Yeah, you think your job sucks. It's, it could always be worse. That's for sure. Um, it's okay. So Roman gladiator days is what Kurt would do. Um, Kurt, would, yep. would you rather have very short legs or very short arms? Like if you had to have arms that were only as long as like if, like your your whole hand reaches your whole arm reaches your elbow or your feet reach your knee. What what would you rather? What would you rather be stuck with? Short arms. Short arms. Why, why, do, why, do, you say, <laughs> why do you say that? <laughs> because I need to – if you got short arms, you can't hit the guy. At least you could run around. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, <laughs> right? Little T-Rex little T -Rex <laughs> battles. Exactly. <yeah. laughs> you know, then at least I could jump around and shit. <laughs> what would be a good advantage and disadvantage for each of those, though? Like having short – okay. uh, Yeah, what would be what would be in the short, – Short arms, it, it's going to be very hard to uh, crucify you. And uh, – or, or to uh, tie your hands together behind your back because you got little short arms. <laughs> it'd be, it, it would be, it would be hard to arm lock you. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> All right, because your arms are. All right, one of these things has to go forever. You can never eat it again. Uh, pizza, sushi, fried chicken, or Mexican food. Pizza. You get rid of pizza. Yeah, forever. No, the other ones, the other foods are way better. Really? Okay. Okay. That's I have. Yeah. A, I, I that's a hard disagree for me, but I but I respect your choice. I respect your I, choice. I, but no, because I fucking love sushi. Uh, me too. I love what was the other one? Fried chicken or Mexican food? I love fried chicken. <laughs> Dude, I uh, yeah, I, I think for me, I would do away with fried chicken. Fried chicken's good, and but really, yeah, between Mexican mm. food, sushi, and, and pizza, I, I couldn't give up those other three. And Mexican food, that's that's part of my 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 whole lifestyle. I put everything in a tortilla. Yeah, yeah, Mex Mexican food, Mexican food's legit for sure, for sure. Do you make pupusas? Did your did your mom ever? Did your mom make those? Cause you're being South Florida. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do, do you make those that's, yourself? That's, no, no, no. They, they got them down on Mission Street or there's a place out here uh, off of, like down the street from my house that has really good ones. Yeah. There used to be a spot in Atlanta. There's a Salvadorian restaurant, a uh, little like a little like a bakery slash restaurant. They had some amazing ones, man. They were so good. That's something and car detailing and window tinting. <laughs> a one stop shop, a true, a true one stop shop for sure. It's true. I can go get my windows tinted and pupusas. <laughs> <laughs> it's man it, it's efficiency it's efficiency <laughs> yes all right in the same spirit as the food question uh one band has to go you can never listen to, to, to one of these bands again okay all right slayer pantera metallica iron maiden or black sabbath which one has to go forever <sighs> it's a hard one what was the other one so okay it was slayer slayer pantera Metallica, Iron Maiden, or Black Sabbath? One has to go. Oh, never to be, never, be, never to be listened to. Never, again. never, nunca escutar demais. Oh my God, <laughs> fuck, fuck, that's really hard. It's a hard one. Uh, Iron Maiden. Oh, Iron Maiden. Okay. All right. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. It's painful. Uh, there's, there's no answer that's not painful. I know. I know. That's a tough one. Right? I, I did that. I, I mean, I picked those. The only purpose, reason I was I was gonna go Metallica because they haven't been like really heavy since like and Justice for All. Yeah. 
But then again, Iron Maiden, you know, after, after what Bruce, was after? After Bruce left. Yeah. I, I like their stuff after Bruce left still, but I think, yeah, Bruce, for live shows especially, there's no, that you can't replace Bruce Dickinson, man. It's, it's No, you yeah. can't. And he can fence like a motherfucker. He can fence, yeah, yeah. They're gonna, he's gonna be here actually. So, dude, this is so disappointing. I've been waiting to see Iron Maiden live forever, and they're gonna be here in December. But I'll be in the states while they're here. I'll be there. I'll be with my parents for Christmas, so I'm gonna miss it. And then Bruce, they're, 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 and they're touring with Bruce Dickinson, right? No, no. Bruce is or, doing his no? own thing. He just made a new album. And so, and so Bruce is actually Whoa. gonna be here in April, but I don't know anything of his new album. I haven't heard anything yet. So huh. I, might, I might go just to just to see. But I yeah, I don't know. Know who he put up there as the front guy because Bruce Dickinson is the shit. Yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's, uh, he, dude, his, his, he, he used to train like an athlete just for the, his performances, like his, like yeah. jumping and leaping and oh my god, bro. There was, there was no showman like him. It was just awesome. But okay, so Iron Maiden. I, I know that was painful. I picked five that I knew would be painful, so I, I respect you. Uh, I respect that was you painful going through that one. All right, how about this one? You have uh, two superpowers that you can have. You can either have invisibility, but when you go invisible, you get terrible gas while using it, or you can fly, but but you can only fly if you're completely nude. Naked. Yeah. Okay, I accept that. You're flying naked. I kind of see. I should have known that would have been the answer to that one because you're 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 partially nude most of the time in places that allow it. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You walk around in underwear if you can get away with it. I yeah, I would. Could you imagine flying over San Francisco nude? You'd probably fit right in. Aren't there parts of San Francisco where you could be naked? There's nude beaches in San as Francisco. As long as you got your shoes and socks on, you're not naked. <laughs> yeah. That's the San Francisco law. Is it really? Yes. Dude, that's so insane. So I, I used to be, I used to be like, okay. And so we're like one street <laughs> up from Folsom street. I would be teaching like the kids class was like four o'clock to five o'clock, you know? And so, and then all of a sudden, you know, this one guy walks up and he's got his fucking docker, uh, doc Martens with socks on and nothing else. And he's watching the class and I'm like, kids turn around and they're like, why am I just turn around? And I go out there. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, motherfucker. You know, but if you're got your shoes and your socks on, you're not yeah, naked. Dude, you can walk that, around. How does that not fall into indecent exposure in front of kids? Like that's that's insane. That's insane. Uh, that's what I say. That's insane. Wow. So if you got your shoes and socks on, you can walk around. I feel like naked. you would, if, if you were flying naked, I feel like you would at least like go around school zones. You're, you're a decent person. Like you, you, would, you know what I mean? I, exactly, like, <laughs> I wouldn't fly over fucking preschools and fucking, you know, fuck. What, what the fuck for? <laughs> because I'm going to start throwing spears and shit from the air. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. You'd weaponize any of these powers for sure. <laughs> okay. You have to be web. You can be naked, but you can carry as many weapons as possible. And so, <laughs> so I wonder what air traffic control would think when they see you on the radar. <laughs> It's like what is what is that? What is that throwing spears? It looks like it's butt dive cheek. bombing. Yeah. It's dive bombing now. Yeah, we can make out we can make out some butt cheeks and some spears. I'm not sure what exactly. He's got a really nice tan line. All of a sudden, like a blue a blue angel flies up next to you, like, an, like a, a fighter jet flies up next to you to identify what you are. You're just how's it going? Oh man! All right. Well, so yeah. So so nude nude flying is your is what you take. I would over. take nude flying rather than invisible farting. Yes, exactly. All right, good. All right, you're stuck in a room for a year and you can't leave. What what three things would you demand to have with you to make it through the year? Wow, I'm gonna need a thousand books. Okay. Uh, an art set, and uh, and a and a mp3 player nice nice good choices yeah good choice of music reading and art that, that that would be that'd be pretty good that'd be pretty good uh would you rather live life in a post-apocalypse zombie style earth or uh live life in a colony on mars a new colony on mars i think the the colony would be better than than the post apocalyptic and trying to find food with yeah. zombies. Yeah. And then there's there's like, uh, dude, I'm into all this like, there's all kinds of shit going on in the world, right? Yeah. And there's like, UFOs and secret societies and c 
conspiracy theories. I love all this shit. Yeah. But I mean, it, some some people who are like clairvoyant and they, they've said that there will be uh, Mars, uh, you know, whatever oh, station yeah. colony and stuff like that. So they said that it wouldn't surprise me, man. So, dude, here's my here's my thought process behind the the the, the Earth colony and the in the in the alien wasteland, uh, the zombie wasteland. I feel like. If you're someone that's real good at surviving and hoarding and preparing, you could theoretically lock down a really sweet, like, you know, 50th floor office building and have that as just your lair. And you could hoard a lot of food and you could just kind of live high on the land above everything. In a colony, I feel uh, in space, I would feel like it would be very structured, very regimented. Uh, there'd be certain certain amounts of things that you could own or eat or how much food you could actually have for yourself. You know what I yes, mean? and would there be and would there be marijuana on Mars? Probably not. But see, you can you can collect exactly. everything. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be. I'm All surprised. Right. I'm surprised that for the room locked in a room that didn't make it on your list. You know, if you're locked in a room, marijuana. For a year, yeah. Like, no, I, it, since you're saying locked up, I've been locked up. No, and, I meant just locked they don't in give a room. You marijuana. <laughs> no, of course. Oh, <laughs> is that not part of the the jail? Not on the menu. You get below. You get bologna with two pieces of bread and and that's it and mustard packet. I feel like in a colony, yeah, things would just be really regimented. So I, I wonder about someone like you who's very much a kind of a survival kind of wild guy. Like, it, would it be better for you to just lock down your own, your own uh, supplies and your own way of living? If I was posted up really good, then I would prefer the post up in, in a high rise. Where you could, where I could block the stuff, and then yeah, that'd be all right. That wouldn't. And then be I'd bad. just have to find. I'd have to find a chick though. <laughs> yeah, get lonely. <laughs> get real lonely in that apocalypse. Yeah, for sure. Final question. For, yeah, final, there we go. Final question for the Would You Rather game, Kurt. Uh, would you rather become a merman and live the rest of your life at sea, or shrink to being only two inches tall and live among insects? I would be a merman. A merman. Yeah. <laughs> merman. Merman. I am a man. <laughs> yeah, the insect world is brutal, man. That would be that would be that would be rough. And uh, Kurt, that was the last one for the for the Would You Rather game. Congratulations, you win. I don't have a cute punchline for, for that, like I do the uh, pummel. So you win. Congratulations, right on. Uh, man. Kurt, before you go, man, I know you got to run and get a class going here, but we got some questions submitted from listeners. Uh, if you guys are interested in submitting questions to be read to Kurt on the air. Email askoceander at gmail.com. Askoceander at gmail.com. Be sure to include your first name and the city you're in. And, uh, and I'll read your question on the air to Kurt every time. Uh, all right, Kurt. So question number one coming in from Mike in Dallas, Texas. He says, what's up, Kurt? I'm a big fan. I know you've been going through lots of physical limitations from your years of training and injuries and surgeries. Uh, I've been dealing with tendonitis in my elbow for several months, and it absolutely sucks. Any advice on how I can still take something from class, even if I'm not able to roll hard? You're the man, and thanks for the inspiration over the years. Uh, Kurt, what, what, what can Mike do to take things from class still, even if he can't roll that hard? So <clears throat> he's got a classic tennis elbow, right? And that's from masturbation. <laughs> Mike, you're being called out, my friend. Oh, no. Good thing we don't know your no, last name. Hey, yeah. So so what he what he needs to do is is get that. There's basketball players from doing this, right, because they're shooting baskets all the time. So he needs to put tape around the tendon that's right up here. Okay. The... the but it's still going to hurt, you know, but there's, there's nothing like training guard a lot with only one arm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bummer. What, what, what do you think he could, he could be trying to focus on in order to still be growing his game? <laughs> it's a good time. Like when I had bad shoulder injury, I would just put the sling on and then tie my arm to the belt and got used to using one arm. And it makes, it really does boost your guard when you get your arm back you, you're moving like you don't have it and all of a sudden you have another arm so it's a good it's a good training tool nice yeah so just focus on what you can do and, and, and inevitably you'll you'll develop the other areas around it that's good man Mike, exactly we, Mike we appreciate the question uh, next one Tommy in, uh, Tommy in Los Angeles says what's the most annoying type of student to have <laughs> but what if but what if yeah the what if guys but what if, but what if I kick you in your nuts right now and walk away? <laughs> the what if guys. Yeah, those guys are rough, man. Look, keep your what ifs for when you're at home. You can ask your wife or your girlfriend. <laughs> but, 
everything else here is like pretty much, but what if I'm like, look, if I asked that to half, there was, it was a, a very swift response it was like, ta, right? So it's not, there's no what if, there's just like, do it this way and that's fucking it. That's awesome. Uh, next one's from Gabriel in Illinois. He says, what's up, Kurt? Love your videos and interviews. And I hope you, I hope to make it to San Francisco someday to train with you. What's the best way to deal with really flexible guard players? We were just talking about this earlier. That's funny. Uh, I wrestled, gro so, I wrestled growing up and, and, and control the top pretty well, but when dealing with flexible people who invert a lot, it's such a pain in the ass. How do I crush these fools? Uh, I hope this question, you have to you. fucking smother them like a fucking cement blanket a wet cement blanket, right? And then get, you don't get up, don't stand up, don't get up, just fucking creep over them like a blob, you know? And that's what fucks up. Otherwise, if you're gonna stand up, double under them and flip them to their knees and go behind them yeah. and take their back uh, and avoid their guard completely. That's good advice, that's good advice. So uh, Antonio, I hope that, I'm sorry, um, Gabriel asked that question. Gabriel, thank you for the question, and I hope that helps. Uh, next one, Antonio from New Jersey. He says, what rule format in jiu-jitsu do you think is the best and why? The rule format for, for like, competitions for and such? For jiu-jitsu, yeah. Um, now that uh, IBJJF has uh, added heel hooks to brown and black belts, in, uh, I believe, uh, Nogi only, yeah. right? Yeah. That definitely added to the pool uh, of foot lockers and heel hookers. Um, uh, and then there's, you know, the, the thoughts of adding the slam from the guard and everything. I mean, there, there's merit to all of, all of the venues, you know. I just, I just think that this is no matter what, the guy will find a way to make you know, just like fucking criminal people and, and politicians are bend the rules, you know, or find a loophole. That's what the competitor will do. They go, oh, I, uh, I'm going to do this and therefore I'll be victorious. But then again, now they're, they're starting to already uh, work the rules into, a, into their favor, right? But, um, I mean, otherwise, you know, all the venues pretty much are, are pretty consistent about their 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 rules like uh world tour and um ibjjf and you know most local tournaments follow the 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 old school uh, rules so yeah i think i think the ibjjf is pretty pretty good and everything i i do like you know like my rules are just a little bit different you know it, it, i i do short rounds and you have to try to finish each other <laughs> Yeah, the KO finisher is a good, uh, always a great event. Are you going to put on more of those events? You think you can do more KO? Finishers? I got, I got to find a, I have to find a logistics team. Yeah, yeah, that was, that's a big, a big part of it for sure. Yeah, yeah, running, running events is hard without a team for sure. So, yeah. Well, Gabriel or uh, Antonio, I appreciate the uh, the question, buddy. Uh, next one's from Eric in Toronto. He says, "What are things you see people doing nowadays in jujitsu that would have gotten them slapped by the old school guys back in the day?" Well, that shit, a lot of things would get you slapped or fucking fined. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that Half hated foot locks and wrist locks and still does to this day. So he always taught me to go after the guy's neck because that really stops the person. It's, you can break a guy's arm and he'll keep fighting. And uh, we've seen examples of that when Roger fought... Uh, Jacare, uh, Jacare. Jacare. Yeah. Right. And so, and the fight kept going and the guy was like, his arm was like <sighs> whipping around behind him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Half always taught me to fucking pass guard and I go, what's my, what's my, what's my strategy? And he's all go out there, throw him on the floor, pass his guard and choke him. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> Easy enough. <laughs> Easy. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Eric, I appreciate the question, man. Uh, final question from, from the listeners, Kurt. We got Victor in Germany. Uh, he says, uh, Kurt, I know you're half German. Have you been here before? And if so, what did you like and dislike? Also, please bring back the move of the week. Uh, Victor, was ist los? I've been to Germany a bunch of times and I, I love it. And I was uh, like 40 
com- kilometers outside of uh, Munich, which is uh, Bachhausen, is a small town out there by Aufkirchen. And so, uh, man, I loved everything. I, I, I liked the food. I liked the people. I liked the, the, the whole terrain. And, and what's cool about Europe is like, hey, I think I want to go to Austria. And then you, you jump on a boat and you're in Austria, you know, and you jump on a train and you're, you're over here. Or you're, you're, you just can see so much stuff in Europe. And the, I was there when I was young. But I was there in, in um, ooh, early, and then I remember I was there 72, 74, 76. And then, um, and then I went crazy and, and started to get older and, and do fucked up shit. And then, um, <laughs> and then my, my, my aunt my, and, my, and my uncles come over here and visit now. So they come over here. So... I hope to get back there to Germany. I, I, I got to get my passport in order. And then I want to do uh, a European tour. That'd be great. Yeah. Some put up yeah. like a European seminar tour. That'd be awesome, man. Hell yeah. 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 There's a lot of jujitsu all over Europe. Germany especially has a, has a big jujitsu scene. Yeah. So that'd be, that'd be a cool stop for Yeah. Fun. Awesome. Well, Kurt, that was the last one for the, uh, for the listeners, man. What are some of your big goals for the rest of, for the next, I, I, we already asked, I already asked you what your goals were for the year. What are your big goals for the next few months coming up? I just want to get out there and and, uh, and see everybody in the United States and and do a good uh, seminars all over all over the seminar all over uh, uh, the United States. Awesome, excellent, man. Well, for anyone out there that wants to keep up with Kurt, uh, if you guys want to have him for seminars, he's available for seminars uh, right now. So he's trying he's trying to book, get things booked. So if you're in the U.S. especially, uh, hit him up on social media. You guys can follow him on Instagram, Kurt Osiander. His YouTube channel is uh, Kurt. O- just type in Kurt Osiander and hit subscribe and hit the little bell icon to get notified when he adds new videos. Uh, and then, guys, if you want to learn from Kurt anywhere in the world, uh, he has a great instructional with us here at BJJFanatics.com. It's called Fundamental of a jiu-jitsu renegade it's one of our best sellers uh so whether or not you are able to get out to san francisco and train with kurt in person make it to one of his seminars he's trying to put together or hop on to bjj fanatics kurt will uh, show you some really cool stuff that you might not have seen before so kurt speaking of teaching i know you got to go man i appreciate your time i hope you have a good class and uh that's going to do it for this episode everybody i appreciate you tuning in please stay tuned for the next episode of the bjj fanatics podcast